Hi, I'm Matthew Welsh from the Australian School of Petroleum and Energy Resources at the University of Adelaide. Today I'm going to be telling you about my paper, Underconfident in Hindsight, Memory, Hindsight, Bias and Overconfidence. So, a little bit of background. So my background, I did my PhD in psychology, um, individual differences in animal intelligence. But since then, I've been working in the Australian School of Petroleum and Energy Resources, looking at how biases affect industry judgments and decisions. And that sort of leads me to the background to this research. So a bias called overconfidence is a key problem for industry decisions. And one of the observations from industry data is that about 40% of forecast values fall outside the ranges that their experts are 80% confident they will fall within. So there's a significant mismatch between people's knowledge and their confidence. Um, before I go too much further, though, I need to point out that overconfidence is actually not a single thing if you look at the literature. There are at least three types of overconfidence, so Moore and Healy describe these three. Overestimation, so if you think about this as asking someone, how many questions do you think you got right? And if they overestimate the number of questions they got right, that's overestimation. Overplacement, on the other hand, is when they're comparing themselves to other people. So what percentage of people do you think you're a better driver than? And overprecision, which is the one that the oil industry in particular is interested in, is when you ask someone to give you a range of values that they're confident to some specified level that the true value will fall within, it tends that the values fall inside that range less often than you'd expect. And the over-precision one is, seems more distinct from the other two, I think, just looking at it. But it's also shown to be more robust. And so that has led to questions about whether it shares the same underlying causes. So that brings me to the causes of over-precision. And there have been different theories put forward about what causes it. And to some extent, it may be that multiple of these share some of the explanatory power. So there have been questions about whether it's short-term memory limits, so the naive statistician model of Juslin et al, where the idea is that because people can only hold a limited number of things in their head at once, when they try to make estimates about populations um, based on that limited sample, they underestimate the true range of the population, and therefore give too narrow samples. And there's some evidence for that, but it's been inconsistent. And you know, I've had seen a number of papers where that's failed to replicate, and some where it does. There's also a question about conversational norms. So this is Yanivan Foster's informativeness idea, the idea that people deliberately limit the range of these um, intervals because they're not trying to tell you the real range that values could take. They're really trying to tell you where they think the best estimate is. So they're trying to be informative about the true value rather than capture the true uncertainty. And there is solid evidence that this contributes to overconfidence, but it doesn't seem to explain it all. And so I've been thinking about other things that might explain overprecision and other forms of overconfidence. And this led me to think about hindsight bias, which is another bias commonly discussed in the heuristics and biases sort of vein, but almost never mentioned in the same breath as overconfidence. So hindsight bias is the fact that we update our memories in light of new information. So Fishoff and Bates you know, showed this in 1975, that people, after something had been observed, basically rewrote their memories so that they thought they'd predicted it in the first place. That is, hindsight bias is basically us remembering being right more often than we are, which and to my mind sounds an awful lot like the mirror image of overconfidence, where we expect to be right more often than we are. So my thought was, could hindsight bias be causing overconfidence? So the fact that we remember being right more often than we were causing us to predict being right more often than we will be. Okay, so let's take a step back from that and think about how these things are linked. It's clear, I think, that both of these would be memory effects in some way. So hindsight bias clearly is. It's about people rewriting their memories to... But if overconfidence is being caused by this same effect, then it's because we have these faulty memories and we're using that as the basis for our future predictions. So this is my 
vague sort of um, picture of memory for those people who, like me, are not memory researchers. And we've got, you know, iconic memory, which lasts a fraction of a second. We have our short-term memory where we can hold a limited number of things. We can rehearse them and put them into our long-term memory and pull them out again using a retrieval process. And we've got in our long-term memory, episodic memory where things are in a context and semantic memory where they've been stripped of their context and they're just facts that we remember. So <clears throat> that's you know, a vague sort of picture of how memory is, how different aspects of memory are constructed. But I have an individual differences background. So when I think about memory, I tend to think of it in these terms. So these are the um, broad abilities from the Cattell Horn Carroll um, model of intelligence. So GC is crystallized intelligence, so things that you know, which you know fairly clearly maps onto long-term memory. GLR, which is long-term retrieval, so retrieval of objects from long-term memory, and GSM, which is your short-term or working memory. And those three um, broad abilities are basically three types of intelligence that are all related to how well we remember things. So that brings me to sort of being able to lay out the point of the study. So I had this um, hypothesis that I wanted to check. First of all, whether these three types of overconfidence will all correlate with one another. So are they being caused by the same thing? Or are they being caused by distinct processes? Second, this idea that um, there should be a link between hindsight bias and overconfidence. So if there's, they are being caused by the same underlying effects, or if more directly hindsight bias causes overconfidence, you'd expect them to correlate. So people higher in hindsight bias should show more overconfidence. And then finally, the idea that memory will predict the degree of bias shown. And here I'm defining memory as these broad abilities from the Cattell Horn Carroll model of intelligence, because that allows me to have, you know, robust measures of memory. So this is the sort of broad outline of the study. I actually had five CHC broad ability measures because I included this study as part of a larger study that included some other measures. So in addition to the three memory measures, GC, GLR, and GSM, I had a measure of fluid intelligence, GF, and quantitative intelligence, so GQ. I used um, 20 range estimation tasks, asking people to give ranges that they were 80% confident the true value would fall within for over precision. So the measures just what percentage of those ranges actually contained the true value compared to the 80%. Then we had an overplacement measure done pre and post the over precision task. So we basically asked what percentage of people do you think you will do better than on the over precision task? And then after we asked what percentage of people do you think you did better than on the over precision task? And then we had a direct overestimation measure. So how many of your ranges in the overprecision task do you think contain the true value? And the last one, the hindsight bias. So after all of the <coughs> overconfidence testing was done, participants were shown 44 questions. This included the 20 overprecision ones and 24 from various cognitive tasks. And they were shown the true answer and asked whether they believed that answer correctly to measure whether seeing the true answer caused hindsight bias, caused them to update their memory to think that they'd gotten that correct. So we compared the ones that actually gotten correct with how often they thought they had given that they now had this information. And it was a fairly big study. We had 300 people complete all of these measures aged from you know, 18 to 79, most of them native English speakers, mostly university students and graduates. So what did we find? Well, first of all, let's look at the existence of the biases. So this is just whether the people's responses showed the biases we were looking for. So overplacement, overestimation, and overprecision. And we've just done a single sample t-test to see whether the degree of difference between the mean of the group and zero, which is what you'd expect if there's no bias, is significant. You can see that it's significant for the pre-estimate of the overplacement, and for overestimation and overprecision, and for hindsight bias. Not for the 
overplacement done post thing. So it seems that actually having done the overposition task, people came to the realization that it was harder than they thought it would be, and actually tended to slightly underestimate their performance, but not significantly so. But we have evidence of all of the biases that we were looking at. So the three forms were the confidence and hindsight bias. And these are the relationships between the biases. So we have uh, just co simple correlations here. And what you can see is that, first of all, all the correlations are significant at the 0 0.001 level because we have a sample size of 300. And you can see that the overconfidence measures are quite strongly related to one another but they're also all moderately related to hindsight bias. So the correlations ranging from 0.33 up to almost 0.4. So it seems that we're confirming that hindsight bias and overconfidence in all three of its forms are related to each other. Um, this table shows the relationships between the biases and cognitive abilities. So we had, as I said, these five measures of broad ability from the cattell horn carroll model. And we've got the five um, measures of bias. And what you can see is that if we look at the um, uh, memory ones, so these three here, we do have you know, small to moderate sorts of relationships between the memory measures and hindsight bias with crystallized intelligence having the best predictive power with hindsight bias of almost 0.3. But there are relationships, significant relationships for most of the biases with at least one of the memory measures. We also, however, have this column over here where the fluid intelligence measure is the best. And that probably reflects partly the fact that all of these measures correlate intercorrelate to some extent, but fluid intelligence is a good measure of how well people will do on novel tasks. And so the fact that these, you know, all of these tasks were novel for people, their fluid intelligence was probably always going to come into play to some extent. Numerical ability, you see here, only has an impact on people's post overplacement. So basically, and it's got a negative one, so people who were better with numbers had a greater tendency to realize after doing the overposition pass that they hadn't done that well. So they showed less bias there. And they you know, did showed less overprecision bias as well. So people who were better with numbers were better at the overprecision task. Um, the key thing here, I guess, is that crystallized intelligence and long-term retrieval are both better predictors than short-term memory. So again, there's some evidence that short-term memory is playing a role, but it's not a very big role. So it seems that other things have larger impacts on the level of overconfidence and you know, hindsight bias in this case. Um, so to conclude, we have evidence that three types of overconfidence are related. And there are strong correlations, even in the case where there was no bias at the group level. So the overprecision post, the people who did worse on that still did worse on the other measures of overconfidence. All three measures of overconfidence correlate with hindsight bias, offering some support for the idea that they share this common underlying cause. And all four biases are stronger in people with lower cognitive abilities. So GC predicts all of the biases in our test except overestimation. GLI has weaker relationships, but predicts most of them. Short-term memory has even weaker relationships. GF has quite strong ones. And GQ has stronger links to the more numerically based ones. All right, future directions. So probably need to do some structural equation modeling to tease apart how the cognitive abilities and biases interact. I also need to do some timing analysis because the duration between the initial and subsequent testing actually varied between participants because they did the first part online, then came into the laboratory at a convenient time. And we also need to probably design an experiment to actually establish some causality. So we've shown correlations, but we don't have any evidence of causality yet. And there's also evidence that there may be three types of hindsight bias. So I may have to go back and look at that in greater detail. But for now, I will stop. Thank you very much for listening.